Hi, and welcome to AGH At Home Storytime. My name is Sarah Dickinson and I'm with the Art Gallery of Hamilton and I'm so pleased you could join us on this beautiful sunny day. We are outside in my backyard. And that's because it's the setting of our story and the theme, actually. Because my dog Bean made a discovery about 10 days ago. She uncovered a rabbit's nest right there. And I decided that would be a great theme for our story. Now, our book is The Complete Adventures of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Not only did she write these stories, but she illustrated them as well. You may see the rabbits hopping around. They're getting very bold and very adventurous. Perhaps we might see some during our story. Keep an eye out. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Then Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very adventurous, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuce and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling, Stop! Thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not, unfortunately, run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop on the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind. He rushed on and ran into the tool shed and jumped into a watering can. It would have been a beautiful place to hide if it didn't have so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed perhaps hidden under a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. <gasps> Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. And he tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath, trembling with fright, and he had not le the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in the can. He found a door in the wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a chubby little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doors, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pee in her mouth that she couldn't answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. 
he went back toward the tool shed. But suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out, climbed upon a wheelbarrow, and peeped over. But the first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight wall behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter didn't care. He slipped under the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looking behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he'd done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread, milk, and blackberries for supper. Poor Peter had none. The end. Did you see the rabbits? Hmm. Maybe we can get a little bit of closer and have a look. About ten days ago, I found Bean digging in the garden. This is what she'd uncovered. Six little bunny rabbits in their nest. My son Zachary and I quickly went online to find out what you do when you find a nest of bunnies and we were told to cover it back up and put a little piece of string across the top so that when the mummy comes back at night to feed her babies we'll know that she's fed them because the nest will have been disturbed and the string will have been moved. So that's just what we did. And we were very happy to come back the next morning to see that the mummy had been back to take care of her babies. Throughout the week, the bunnies got bigger and bigger. And you can see their ears perking up just a little bit. It's been rather exciting watching this happen. They're moving. Let's see if we can see them. I think it's time that they found a new one. Whoop, whoop. Very, that must be the most adventurous one. Can you see the others? Goodness, they're got, they've gotten so big. I'd like to take you to the gallery to show you a couple pictures of rabbits that we have in our permanent collection. Come with me. We are now in the art gallery of Hamilton's vault. I'm going to show you three very different works of art from our permanent collection depicting rabbits. You compare and you think about which ones you like and why. Let's take a look. Our first piece is called Bunny Envy by American artist and painter Dennis Farber. What do you notice in this photograph. Why do you think the artist chose the title Bunny Envy? A 
Our second piece is by Canadian artist Robert Bateman, entitled Rabbit in the Grass. Robert Bateman is a realist. His paintings are very, very detailed. They look almost lifelike. In his works, he shares with us his deep appreciation for nature, featuring wildlife in their natural habitat. This one reminds me of our bunnies. Our last piece is called Mars Bunny by Canadian mixed media artist John Scott. He uses his art as a commentary on what's going on in our world. And this character is named Terrified Bunny and he pops up in quite a number of his works. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for letting me share our adventures with our bunny rabbits as well as the adventures of Peter Rabbit. I look forward to seeing you next time at AGH At Home's Storytime. Bye for now.